Have you ever felt like you just can't keep up with everything that's going on out there that could be affecting your kids? I know as a parent of three teens, I certainly have felt that way. And today, we're going to tackle one of those things out there that maybe you've heard about, but you're not quite sure what it is. Hey everyone, Adam Holtz here, your host of The Plugged In Show, focus on the family's weekly conversation about entertainment, pop culture, and technology. Thanks so much for joining us today. Well, today we are going to dive into the subject of paid subscriptions on the site OnlyFans. It might sound like an innocuous name, or maybe it sounds like a betting site, but it's not. And as a parent, you need to know what is going on with OnlyFans because, well, your kids may know more about it than you do. And in our second segment, Bob Hoos will tell us about a new movie called If. What he has to say might just be the deciding factor for if you and your family want to see it. Well, before we dive into those two conversations today, I would love for you to check out our team's new book if you haven't done so already. It's called Becoming a Screen Savvy Family. It's practical, it's concrete, and it digs into deeper themes like helping your family integrate a biblical worldview when it comes to entertainment and technology. And today, for a gift of any amount, we would love to send you a copy of it. You'll find information on how to do that in the episode notes for today's show. Well, with no further ado, let's get started. Today, we have with us Emily Chow, Kennedy Unthank, and Bob Hoos. Hey, everyone. Hello. Hello, Adam. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I asked about people's favorite summer movie memory, and now I want to ask a parallel question. What's a song from your younger years that reminds you most of summer? Who wants to kick this one off today? Emily, I choose you. Sure. I'll go ahead. Um... It's There She Goes by The Laws. Aww. And I think that the reason it always makes me think of um, Summer is because um, when I was a kid, Parent Trap came out, and that was one of the songs that was in that movie. And, of yep. course, the whole movie takes place over the course of a single summer. So I think maybe that's why, because I watched it a lot when over I was a and kid. Over again. So that song, I hear it, and I'm like, it's summertime. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Yeah, I think for me, I've been gravitating between a a few, but I'm just going to tell you two of them. Okay. Um, The first one is Soak Up the Sun by Sheryl Crow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I I understand that that song is not actually about summer. It's just like for whatever reason, every time (laughs) we were driving to like the beach or something, that song would always come on. So uh, the other one. Uh, this Magic Moment by the Drifters. Nice. Uh, if you remember that song I is in you. the Sandlot. Um, and I think that's why I associate it so much with summer because that whole movie is, you know, them uh, just playing baseball throughout the summer. Yeah. And, and that song is just ingrained in my head when it comes to like small town, 4th of July kind of festival. Those well, are awesome choices. And I think it's interesting that both of you have music associated with movies yeah. because that's <laughs> often the way of it, right? We yeah. Maybe we get exposed to a song that we like in a movie. Maybe we haven't heard it before. And if you watch that movie over and over again, there's that extra exposure to that particular song or songs. Mr. Hoos, what do you have for us? Well, the song that instantly comes to mind for me is a song that actually was old when I was a kid. Um, it, it's called Red Rubber Ball. Okay. It's a song by The Circle, and it's a 60s tune that uh, is really bouncy. It's not, not necessarily about summer. It's about the kinds of things that happen in summer, you know, falling in love, breaking up, starting over, and it's really bouncy. It's it's one of those songs that just sticks in your head. Okay. Well, I'm going to cheat. to sing it? Uh, <laughs> knock yourself out? No, no, no. I'm no? Not joking. See, I called your bluff there. <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> So I'm going to pick an entire album, and it is Endless Summer, which is a Beach Boys Greatest Hits yep. album that came out in 1974. My parents, my dad especially, uh, he was a huge Beach Boys fan. So my earliest music memories are of the Beach Boys and mm. just singing those songs over and over and over. And obviously, they built an entire career on the concept of summer. Yeah, you know, yeah. it was this idealization wrong. of Southern California of surfing, of hot cars, hot cars, and yeah. cute girls and the beach, and 
little deuce coupes and mm -hmm. you know even if you weren't even sure what a little deuce coupe actually was you um, sang along you sang along and so for me the beach boys really epitomize of those summer songs and if you're listening to our show today we would love to hear from you what is your own personal song or you know we'll even let you do an album of the summer you can let us know at team at the plugged in show dot com and if there's anything else you would like to tell us about your favorite things about summer we'd love to hear about that too you know i'm, I'm just proud of that none of us mentioned anything jimmy buffett well that's true because <laughs> his whole thing except is, for now you did yeah yeah that's why i brought it up because <laughs> i feel like someone would come and be like oh i can't believe it no one right? mentioned cheeseburger in paradise margarita well, as you say even my second choice was not jimmy buffett it was uh um here comes the sun which is oh, beatles yeah. Yeah. So, yeah there you go yeah, yeah. no jimmy buffett for well you. <laughs> let's jump into our first conversation today and, and we're going to talk about only fans and what you need to know as parents as i mentioned in the introduction there's so much going on out there these days that sometimes for us as parents we can feel like it is hard to keep up and you might get bits and pieces or snippets of information, but sometimes we hear about stuff, especially when it comes to our kids and we're just not sure what it is or what they're talking about. And so one of the things that we want to do at Plugged In is striving to help you close that information gap uh, as it relates to your kids and the culture they are in. And one of the ways we're doing that is with a new feature on our blog called On the Radar, which Emily is writing for us each week. Um, and we talked about it a while back on the show, but I wanted to remind you that it's there. Every week we're addressing three trends or issues that we think you need to know about as parents, what the trend is, why it's important, and what you might want to do about it. And a couple weeks ago, Emily wrote about the content creator site called OnlyFans, and I think it definitely falls into the category of need to know. I'm sure some of you are already familiar with it, but if you're not, I wanted to talk about what it is, why it's important, and what you need to know about it. So what is OnlyFans? What's going on on this particular website? Um, well, it is classified as an adult website, and basically creators charge a subscription fee for access to their photos and videos, um, and a lot of those photos and videos happen to be explicit. A and lot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cannot emphasize that enough. <laughs> yeah, and you're absolutely right, Adam. I think there are a lot of people that may not have heard of OnlyFans. Well, does it sound particularly salacious? Yeah, I mean, right? the fact is that um, we do this as a living, and I hadn't heard of OnlyFans until about a year and a half ago when you mentioned an artist that you had just heard about having an OnlyFans, and I thought, hmm, that's interesting. And again, my thought was it's some sort of fan site where you get – pictures you get fun things you know absolutely but it, that's what you get you but, also get explosive material but that's material. it, that's it. <laughs> yeah the, the this kind of uh website it doesn't have to be sexually focused stuff but it oftentimes is most of the time that's what you'll find there no and, and that's the implication if someone says they have an only fans the yeah. implication is you can go to my profile and see yeah. explicit photos I, th I think one of the biggest questions is why is it popular in this age where, I mean, literally anybody can pick up a computer and if it doesn't have some sort of filter on there, right. you can access pornography and pictures of naked people anywhere. Yeah. So why is this one so popular? I think that's a great question, Bob. What do you guys think about that question? The only thing that would immediately come to mind is, I don't know, I feel like you might be able to say that it because it's exclusive it's like oh only i get to see this you know right. i well i and all the other subscribers you right know? but there's probably some thrill of being like oh i'm in an exclusive club yeah for this. Um, yeah like the I, country club yeah <laughs> today's country club i think that there is an element where you can um request certain videos or photos that are sent only to you so there's you know talking about exclusivity if you let's say some pop artists because they're expanding their horizons. They're trying to get athletes and pop stars and whatnot to release content on here too. Not necessarily explicit content, just content in general because they're trying to build their site more um, beyond just, you know, your typical porn star content. And um, so I guess there could be 
some draw there. Like if you could send a message to some athlete who's on there and be like, can you send me a personalized happy birthday message? And then they send you a video where they sing you happy birthday. Like there's an appeal to that. Well, yeah. The irony though is that that already exists. Exactly. Is there's already an, an app called Cameo right. where you can talk to, you know, uh, actors or sports athletes or whoever you might want to and, and they'll yeah, but this set a price is, this, and this send it. This is different because it's primarily sexual. Yes. See, I was thinking that it, it has a lot to do with this this new rise of parasocial relationships. Yep. Yep. You know, the fact mm-hmm. that that we as a culture tend to be finding our connections online in social media things, you know? And so in in this case, you've got these people that you've come to know, and it could be people that you've you've watched on TikTok, you've watched on Instagram, and but now you can see them naked. So it so you, it feels like you've got a connection with these people and they're giving you something that that you wouldn't expect them to. Well, and I think in exchange the, for money. <laughs> right, right. Right. Exactly. I mean, I think the parasocial relationship comment here is hugely important because I would say probably most of us have something that we're following online somewhere, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, we have these connections with people that are creating content. Yeah. And so this takes that personal connection. And as you said, fairly bluntly, you know, it adds that sexual component to it, which I think adds you know, the appearance of intimacy and all of the things that we would talk about with with false intimacy, with pornography. Yeah. It's true here, but there's that perception that you've got a personal connection. And frankly, I think that it makes it that much more insidious. You know, if you get locked into that. Oh, I agree. Um, I, I could see how it would be a pretty powerful thing. And I, I want to say really clearly in my own research on this, I did not go on OnlyFans. So I have not got any personal uh, exposure or experience with yeah. it, but but just reading about it, um, especially if we're talking about a celebrity, because there are a lot of people who are known celebrities that for whatever reason, maybe money being the biggest one, they have decided that they want to go down this path and it's like wow i can't believe that person has an only fans site well only fans isn't the only website that does this True. type of subscription content though there's yeah. one called passes um yep. fansly I, yeah fansly we just mentioned cameo like there are a lot of websites out there where celebrities and athletes where the content the exclusive content that they're releasing isn't even explicit yeah. but people are paying money well, to see this content. And Patreon is another one. Yes. And in, well, yeah. in some ways, I think when OnlyFans started, it was actually pretty similar to Patreon, which became this site primarily for social media people to give exclusive content. Um, but it morphed into this sexual stuff. And in 2021, OnlyFans actually tried to do a rebrand away yeah. from the sexual stuff. Yeah. They're still trying. And <laughs> it didn't really work. Uh, and that's just what they've become known for. Well, it's kind of ironic is that you're, I've actually started to see all this stuff kind of pop up on other social media too, where they're trying yep. to figure out how to balance all this stuff. Because like for instance, on Twitch, they recently had to have a lot of conversations about what was and wasn't appropriate for a content creator to be wearing while they were streaming. Yep. Because a lot of them realized, oh, well, if I just... You know, if yeah. I play Call of Duty, but I'm also in a bikini, a bikini you know, yeah, or something, yeah. right. then I get like three times as many views. And if I get three times as many views, I'm more likely to get more money. And so Twitch had to go in and be like, okay, we, we got to figure out the limits on this because people are finding all the loopholes, they're finding all the yeah. uh, towing the line as close as you can. And so it's not just kind of like OnlyFans that got taken over by all this stuff. It's not just uh, these websites that are kind of I guess I'll say more tailor made right to be taken over by that kind of stuff but it's happening on a lot of other social media too where they have to decide are we going to allow this or not and and that you know we've sort of ventured around the idea of the money that they make right but really that is the major sirens call for people who want to do this because yep. this site is set up where the site itself gets like 20 percent of whatever the right. fees subscription fees are and the artist or the the creator creates or gets 
eighty percent. Right, and that's that can be a pretty hefty chunk of change, and it's I think it's one of those things that unfortunately is tempting, just average young girls to say. Wow, think of all the money I could make and all I've got to do is this. It's easier to make money on a site like OnlyFans than it is to make money as a social media star alone. Because right. yeah. as a social media star alone, you have to deal with all of the um, all the different advertising rules, all the different right. like there it's hard to make money as a YouTuber, you know? Right. But if you are supplementing that income, say with an OnlyFans or passes or one of these other fan sites, then you might actually make a decent chunk of change. And I and yeah, I agree with you. It can make it very tempting for somebody, you know, who is seriously considering, oh, I'm going to do social media and that's going to be my career. It could be very tempting for them yeah. to look at that and say, all right, well, let's do this. Especially when you're hearing uh, stories about people making tens of thousands of dollars yeah. or more. Yeah. You know, and that's also another reason why I think some of the other um social media sites like YouTube and TikTok are, are all kind of feeding into it. Yeah. You know, because they start there and say, oh, well, I, I can make some money, but I could make a lot over here. Well, and as we try to help our kids with this, I think it's important to to understand that our culture is so incredibly sexualized, right? Yeah. And, and we know that. That's hardly a news flash. This feels like a sort of new front of things that mm -hmm. we need to be aware of that our culture is essentially completely normalizing and mainstreaming oh. sex work that is, it's basically a kind of prostitution. Yep. And that's not usually a word you hear associated with this, but you're selling your sexual images and content for money with strangers. There may not be any literal physical contact, but man, people are paying you to fulfill that fantasy. Yeah, and I think more and more in our culture, uh, as you were saying, we justify that as self-expression, right. as empowerment, right. rather than sex positive, right? Rather than I'm, I'm actually bearing a lot more than my soul on uh, the internet, and it's going to be there forever, no matter what I do here, here on. You yeah. know, at the same time as well, when we're talking about, uh, I because I do 100% agree that the culture is getting more and more sexualized as we go on. I've also seen, uh, particularly online on a lot of different social media sites, there's a lot of people who are rejecting it as well. Yeah. There's a lot of people, uh, I've seen, I mean, from the nicest of nice comments regarding it to things like, oh, you have an OnlyFans, your opinion is rejected, I don't want to hear from you. Yeah. You know, and so there is somewhat of a backlash that's going on, and I don't think it's... I don't think everyone who's doing it is religious. I think there is a kind of general sense in the society that is starting to say, okay, this is kind of going a little too far. Yep. Yeah, I think so as well. And, and I think as we, as we talk about this with our kids, we have to understand that they may have smartphones, their friends may have them. And even though technically somebody is supposed to be 18 or older mm. to be able to set up an account like this, you know, a teenager who wants to figure out how to do it is not going to be thwarted by whatever their verification processes are. And so I think just being aware that that's where our kids are living today, that it's normal for them um, to be in this world where this is an option. Uh, and I think I'm, you know, in my mid fifties and that feels kind of shocking to me, but it's important for us as parents yeah. really to understand that. Any final thoughts on OnlyFans and what parents need to know about it as we wrap up our conversation? Just to kind of go really quick past the uh, age verification process. Yeah. The reason that we wrote about it is because they're being investigated for their age verification process um, because it does have loopholes, basically. Right. And they are... So, yeah, in terms of, like, how kids getting past that, like... Obviously, it has happened or this wouldn't have even come up in our conversation, potentially. So I think what you have to th consider here is there is a conversation to have with your kids about like, okay, this website has an age verification. Why are we even looking at it? Or, right. or any of those fan sites. Why do you want to pay money to see exclusive content from this particular athlete, from this particular pop star? You know, those are questions to be had because... Um, it's one thing to give your money to go see a game, 
Right. You know, or go see a concert. It's another to sit there and say, I need to be so deeply ingrained in this person's personal life that I'm going to pay money to see that personal life behind the scenes. Which is even potentially problematic if we're not dealing with sexual content. Yeah, yeah. that's right? it. And that's actually what I'm talking about. I'm talking in a strictly non-sexual content perspective. This could still be problematic. It could be, you could be dealing with idolization. Um, I'm not going to say stalking, but um, yeah. like there is a little stalkerish vibe to it. Um, there's a lot to consider here. And I think talking to your kids about why they want to subscribe to that type of, to any type of content um, is important. It certainly encourages the use of filters. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> anything like that for your computers or phones. Yep. I think that and just the ongoing conversation about what is God's designed intent for sexuality? And, you know, we've said in the past, there might have been a time where the birds and the bees talk was a one and done kind of thing, but it's not. You know, our culture is deeply invested in the idea that we can get really, really core needs met through sexuality alone. And and we've got to be having a conversation with our kids about what does scripture say about how God has designed this, what his intent is, um, because the culture is having that conversation. Yeah. I completely agree. I think ultimately it goes back to this idea that no one is really an atheist. Mm. Everyone is religious in some sense, even if they won't admit it, and yep. they will set up an idol to worship. Uh, and if it's not going to be God, it'll be money or it'll be sex, and that will be the pinnacle of their uh pinnacle of their entire experience and so i don't think it should really surprise us when our culture which is increasingly becoming more secular is also increasingly becoming more sexual yep because there's i mean uh, if you don't believe in god sex and money and financial stability these are the pinnacle of glory in Mm -hmm. a secular worldview Yep. Um, and if you can get as much of that as possible before you die, then you lived a good life. Yep. And then, I, I mean, that's it's so sad because yeah. that's all it is, really. That's all you have. But like I said, I don't think we should be surprised that this is becoming such an issue because where else are they going to go if right. they don't want to go to God? Right. And, and we've said before, we are hardwired for transcendence and we can't not seek it. And if you're not seeking it, in a relationship with God, you're going to look for it somewhere else. And I mm-hmm. think, as you're saying really eloquently, Kennedy, this is just another expression of that that uh, is in our fallen world, but it may be affecting our kids. And so I hope, as we have talked about this today, it's given you a little bit more information about what OnlyFans is. And, and maybe this can be a catalyst just to continue to talk about the issue of sexuality and entertainment and technology with your kids, because the culture is going to keep having that talk and we need to be having it too. So thanks guys. You bet. Well, in our second segment today, Bob Hoos is going to tell us about if now, if, and if you're wondering what I'm saying, I F um, <laughs> is a new movie. And I would say from the trailers, it certainly looks like it's directed at families. What is the premise here and what do we need to know about it? Well, first of all, IF, or IF, is about imaginary friends. I'm an IF. Get it? Imaginary friend? Oh, so it's an acronym. There you go, yeah. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, and it's uh, essentially about the story about imaginary friends, how they've helped kids, young kids, through difficult times. and But when they grow up, they don't remember the imaginary friends anymore. So the idea behind this movie is that the imaginary friends are still out there. They just don't have friends anymore. Oh. And, so uh, they need like a support group? Yeah. Well, well, actually, they do have a support group, but we won't <laughs> go there yet. Is, uh, can I just interject real quick? Yeah. Is this at all related to Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends? No. Okay. It's, it's not. But, you know, it's in the same... You know, yeah. end of town. Uh, <laughs> the, the idea here is it focuses on a young girl named B, and she's 12 years old uh, and uh, has been going through some rough times of her own, uh, you know, in her life. Her mom passed away when she was young, and her dad is now sick and has to go 
back to the same hospital for a major operation. Mm. It's in New York. And so she's, her grandmother happens to live there. So she's staying with her grandmother. But obviously she's feeling the weight of what's happening in her world. And she happens to spot this, well, it kind of looks like it's flitting in and out of the shadows. It kind of looks like a little girl to her at first. But then when she gets closer, it's like a 1930s cartoon version of a anthropomorphized butterfly. And so, so she goes, wow, and follows this thing. As one does. Yeah, of course. <laughs> right. Because we don't see anthropomorphized butterflies. Not often. Day. Not often, especially 1930s. I'd be like, burn it with fire. <laughs> <laughs> burn the house down. We're moving. <laughs> so anyway, she follows this thing back to an apartment that's actually several floors above her grandmother's apartment. And she meets this guy named Cal. And it's seen, and it, she finds out that he has connection to all these different, this little thing was actually an imaginary friend. And he has a connection with all these different imaginary friends. In fact, he takes her to like an imaginary friend's retirement home. And, uh, and she meets scores of these creatures, these bizarre and really creative looking uh, creatures and people and things. And she decides, you know what? I'm going to spend my time while well, my, my, my grandmother's helping these IFs these imaginary friends find homes or maybe connect with their their past kids who have grown up. Hmm. So it sounds a little bit like Toy Story, a little bit like Inside Out, a little bit like Monsters, Inc. Is yeah, it in it, those it has, sort of... It has that kind of flavoring at times. It's a little different, though. Because it's um, par- is it partially live action? Well, it is. It, that, that's the thing. I mean, actually, that's one of the selling points of this, okay. is the way that they use the CGI characters, and there's tons of them, and they blend those in with live action is actually brilliant. Hmm. It's really one of those things where... Even if the kids get bored over the story, just seeing how these things interact with people is just so much fun, and it's really entertaining. Um, but the the movie deals with things like um, uh, loss, mm-hmm. dealing with loss. It deals with uh, um, remembering good things from the past. It deals with finding your place in the world. And, of course, it also lauds family, you know, the love of family, and especially dads and daughters. Um, mm. this, is, this was directed by John Krasinski, mm-hmm. and he wrote it too. And, and at the screening I saw, he had this little thing at the very beginning saying that he got the idea based on his relationship with his daughter mm. and, and that interaction that was so special and so unique. And it ends up being a very sweet story that you don't expect the, where it's going to go. Hmm. And, and that's a very good thing. I think, I think it's one of those films that doesn't necessarily jump through the typical Hollywood hoops. Okay. And you know what I mean by typical Hollywood ho- hoops? Right. Where they say, you shall talk about this, you shall talk about that, you shall deal with this particular issue. He, it, it sort of just focuses on this young girl and her life and her story. And it's very good. So you have given, I would say, a fairly glowing description of it. Is there content here that parents will want to be aware of ahead of time? There are a few things. Um, They're not necessarily overwhelming, but there are a few things. Um, It misuses God's name like a dozen or so times. And and, OMGs. OMGs is what I'm talking about. And uh, and. In addition to that, there are a couple of moments where some of the characters, the imaginary friend characters, are actually fruit. And so there are these little quips thrown out about this naked fruit. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, They walk into this one part when she's meeting all the different IFs, and it's an art class. And there's a big apple with legs standing up on the podium. And when they walk in, of course, they, she has to cover. But she says, an apple. <laughs> <laughs> As if it was a nude apple. Being, you know, So okay. it's that kind of joke sort of thing in there. Um, the only other thing I would suggest that some parents might be concerned with is just the fact that early on, the story is not a complicated story, but early on, they leave out little bits and pieces where you don't know exactly what's going on until it all comes together near the end. And, and so early on, some of the younger kids might go, huh? Okay. But, but again, I think because of the CGI and, and the characters, you know, the make-believe characters, they'll be entertained anyway. Okay. Well, Bob, thanks for letting us know what is going on. 
in if and you can always check out our full review yes indeed uh, and we will have a link to that in the episode notes for today's show well now it's time for a segment we call name that movie where each of us gives a log line a brief funny description of a movie and the rest of us have to guess what it is and this week because well it's summer i thought Why not movies about water? So do I have a volunteer to go first? I think I'll start because I think mine is pretty easy, actually. Okay. Okay. Um, After a surprise attack leaves her injured, a young surfer learns that God can bring about good even from tragedy. Soul Surfer. Yeah, that would be Soul Surfer. Well, you sound that so with such disdain, <laughs> soul lover. Oh, that's not how it was meant. It's just I was just like, oh, yep, yeah, he's right. Come on, <laughs> I know what exactly. do you have against so, Bethany Hamilton? <laughs> so <laughs> nothing. <laughs> just by way of of, uh, of a brief journey into the woods before we come back to the game, it's one of our family's favorite movies. Yeah, and the shark attack scene is kind of graphic. But, I mean, it really is a remarkable movie Mm -hmm. about Bethany Hamilton and her overcoming this horrific thing that happened to her. So, And also, just as a side note, she's on The Amazing Race. I don't remember what season, but I remember watching her do The Amazing Race. I didn't know that. It was fun. (laughs) Clearly, we need to have like a Bethany Hamilton episode. There you go. There you go. (laughs) Mr. Hughes? Um, Okay. In a world where the polar ice caps have melted. The world is drowning. People have developed gills. One man swims in search of dry land. So it's water world. Yes. (laughs) And ironically, what I wrote started with, in a world world. (laughs) covered with water, one man with gills can rescue everyone. So... (laughs) <laughs> that's mine too sorry and i don't sorry. know that i mean i can i guess i could do a jaws one like real fast uh, here but but you uh, just told us what it was yeah, that's but right. but yeah i mean the funny thing was i had it structured we totally did a Very mind meld the same huh? so uh yeah i guess i have nothing and, and emily that right. leaves us with you and hopefully you didn't pick water world as well <laughs> no um all right here we go a serial killer brutally murders a mother and almost all of her children while her husband watches. Kennedy knows what this is, I bet. No, no, no it's just such a okay. difference in tone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, then it, uh, the father raises his only remaining son. Oh, it's Finding Nemo. Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh, I like what you did there. I didn't do this. I actually saw this like maybe 10 years ago, and I've been waiting for the opportunity to use it. Hmm. Well... Now you well, have. Yep. Now you have, and we can. <laughs> you can cross that off your plugged-in podcast bucket list. I guess yeah, it's just one of those. I got to do a dark movie. It's plot. one of those explanations of like, why do why does Disney Pixar always do like animal movies? Yeah. It's because because if these were people, right. it would be well, a lot more graphic of a rating. Well, I mean, like, it they... is not a good world. Like, if you are a parent in a Disney or Pixar film, no. like. It's Sorry, not, you're it's just not good. spoiler there alert. You're gonna ton, die. <laughs> there are a ton of memes online of like when I find out that like my child has like superpowers or something because it means like oh I'm gonna die soon. <laughs> That's right. And, yeah, it's like or the Star Trek like, equivalent of having a red suit on, you know? Yeah, or if a red you're, shirt. Like the yeah, mom of a Disney princess. Mm. All of the Disney princess moms are like gone. <laughs> they are gone. Uh, this feels like probably two or three other podcasts, but we will. <laughs> We'll stick the landing on our game. Why is Disney like orphans? For today. That's an interesting conversation, actually. And speaking of conversations, we are glad that you have joined ours today. We hope that it has equipped and challenged you and informed you with regard to OnlyFans and this new movie, If. Um, We would love to hear from you about what you thought about today's episode. So if you have thoughts on OnlyFans or If, you can get in touch with us a couple of different ways. You can go to thepluggedinshow.com and leave us a voicemail with your answers to those questions or anything that you want to tell us about pop culture and technology. Or you can reach out to us at team at thepluggedinshow.com. And of course, you can catch us on Facebook and Instagram. And in fact, this week, I am so excited we had our very first voicemail from Mary Martin, who shared this heartfelt message about a movie she is looking forward to this summer. 
the movie that I am looking forward to the most this summer is Inside Out 2, partly because the original Inside Out movie was the last movie that I saw with my dad before he went to be with Jesus. And so it holds a special place in my heart. So I'm looking forward to the second one nine years later. And whether it's good or bad, I will probably cry through the whole thing. But we just appreciate all that you guys do there on the Plugged In Show. Thank you so much. Mary, thanks so much for calling in to share your thoughts with us. And we would love to hear from anyone else listening today to what movie are you most looking forward to this summer? Let us know, and maybe we will share your thoughts on a future show as well. Thanks, Mary. And we would also like to remind you that Plugged In is a part of Focus on the Family. We are a donor-supported ministry. If you've enjoyed or been encouraged by our conversation today, we would invite you to help us keep bringing you the Plugged In show by making a donation. And you can learn more about how to do that in the episode notes for today's show. Well, thanks again for spending some time with us this week. We know there are absolutely a million different ways you could choose to spend your time. We're honored to have you as a part of our conversation. We love talking pop culture and technology with you each week, and we look forward to doing it again next week on another episode of The Plugged In Show. Have you felt it? The calling? The whisper from God that you are meant to help children in out-of-home care? This might be fostering or adopting a child, kinship care, or as a valuable family ally. Focus on the Family has created a website that can help you find your unique purpose at waitnomore.org. No act is too small to a child or fostering family that needs your help. Learn more at waitnomore.org.